Hi, my name is Samir Desai, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to predict the product of an aldol condensation reaction. An aldol condensation reaction is the reaction between identical species, so either two identical aldehydes or two identical ketones. The reaction occurs in two major steps. One is the formation of the aldol, and two is the condensation. The first step, broken down into three parts, results in the formation of an aldol. An aldol is an aldehyde, or a ketone, with a hydroxy group on the beta carbon, or two carbons away from the carbonyl carbon. So if we started with two ketones, a possible aldol would look like this, again, with the OH two carbons from the carbonyl carbon. In the conversion to an aldol, one, the identical species end up with one acting as the electrophile and one acting as the nucleophile. Two, the species acting as the nucleophile behaves this way because it reacts with a catalytic base, resulting in an enolate. Remember that an enolate contains a negatively charged oxygen, which is very reactive in relation to an enol. 3. This enolate then reacts with the carbonyl of the initial keto group, which results in the formation of an aldol. Going back to the first bullet and the importance of identical species, since we have no way of controlling which species behaves as the electrophile and which will act as a nucleophile, identical species allows us to predict the product. Otherwise, two different reactants could result in multiple products formed in unpredictable ratios. That seems like a lot of information. So before we cover step two, let's apply this step one knowledge to a practice question so we can visualize the formation of an aldol. As we can see, there are two equivalents of an aldehyde on the reactant side. The question is asking us to predict the final product, which is much more manageable broken down into two steps. Step one, results in the formation of an aldol. This is the information we reviewed on the last slide. Recall that the formation of an aldol requires a nucleophilic enolate to react with a keto group. As we learned earlier, the catalytic base will deprotonate one equivalent of this aldehyde. The hydrogen on the alpha carbon here will be deprotonated by the strong base like this. It will cause the electrons to shift here to create the carbon-carbon double bond in our enolate and then a shift in the pi electrons in the carbonyl up to the oxygen, like this. The resulting enolate looks like this. Now that the base has deprotonated one equivalent of the aldehyde, we still have the original keto group. The unstable enolate will shift its electrons from the oxygen to create a carbon-oxygen double bond, which will cause the enolate to attack the keto at the positively charged carbon on the carbonyl, and shift the electrons on the keto up to the oxygen, like this. The resulting molecule is composed of the enolate in green and the original aldehyde in orange. Just to double check this, we can see the 1,2 carbons on the enolate correspond with the 1,2 carbons here, and the 1,2 carbons on the keto group correspond to the 1,2 carbons here, which maintains a total of 4 carbons. We're not done yet though. There's one last step before we get to our aldol. The base needs to regenerate. Since it deprotonated the keto group earlier, it's currently a water molecule. The negatively charged oxygen will deprotonate the hydrogen, shifting the electrons here, regenerating our catalyst. The aldol created in the last step looks like this, with the hydroxyl on the beta carbon. Now that we have the aldol, let's move on to the second step. Step two is the condensation or dehydration of the aldol. A dehydration requiring a strong base and high temperature results in the net removal of a water from the molecule. This is called an elimination reaction because the removal of the water forms a double bond. So moving back to the question, we have the aldol formed in the first step in blue, and we know in aldol condensation, a net molecule of water will be removed. This OH will be removed, and there are two hydrogens here and here, both on the alpha carbon, or one carbon away from the carbonyl, so one will be removed. This results in the following molecule, with a double bond between the alpha and the beta carbons, which is why we call this an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl. Now that we've covered the mechanism, you should now feel comfortable predicting the mechanism of an aldol condensation reaction. 